Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have another fun synthesis for you. So we need to synthesize this molecule using toluene and any reagents that contain two carbons or less. Well, first of all, let's quickly remind ourselves what toluene is, and toluene is this molecule, it's a benzene ring with a methyl group sitting on it. And I can see right away that my toluene maps onto my final product, my target molecule, right over here. Then I'm also noticing that I have two two carbon units that I'm going to be adding. One two carbon unit is right here and the other two carbon unit is going to be right there. So my key steps in this synthesis is going to be the formation of this carbon-carbon bond over here and also formation of this ester via some sort of substitution reaction most likely. So let's first of all make our ester and get that out of the way. As I've mentioned, I can make this ester via the substitution reaction, which means that my reagents are going to be a corresponding alkyl halide, like let's say a primary bromide like this, and an acetate nucleophile. So if I were to bring those two species together, I am going to have a simple SN2 reaction that will afford me my final product. Now, the next question that I have here is how am I going to make my bromide? I am keeping in mind that I got to make this carbon-carbon bond somehow, and whenever I am making carbon-carbon bond and I have a functional group on the second carbon away from the carbon where I made my carbon-carbon bond, that is typically a hallmark of an epoxide reaction, and epoxides, once they make new carbon carbon bonds via Grignard reaction or something similar, going to make corresponding alcohols, which means that my bromide is most likely going to be coming from the corresponding alcohol, like this. Or another possibility, since my bromine is sitting on the less substituted carbon, I could also make it via the radical hydrohalogenation of an alkene. So an alternative predecessor is going to be an alkene looking like this. So now, when it comes to making my carbon-carbon bond, I'm going to have two different approaches to that. The blue method is going to be using the Grignard reaction and an epoxide. The green method is going to be actually using reactions of acetylene and the alkyl halides... Uh, via the substitution reactions. So the blue method is going to be using the corresponding benzyl magnesium bromide that we would get from the benzyl bromide itself, which we can make from the starting material, toluene. And when we go to our green method, the alkene that we need for this reaction will be coming from the corresponding alkyne, which in turn is going to be coming from the benzyl bromide as well uh, via the substitution reaction. So in this case, we are going to start from the same starting material and then in the middle we have two different options, either we are going to go the blue method or we are going to deviate a little bit and go the green method, depending on which reactions you have already covered in your course and which reactions you like the most. So if I shrink it a little bit so I have a little bit more space to work on, the blue method is going to start from the radical halogenation of our toluene, so we can use something like bromine and light or maybe NBS and radical initiator or whatever else you like that makes a radical substitution. That goes going to make the corresponding benzyl bromide like that. Then we are going to convert it into the Grignard reagent by using magnesium in THF or ether, giving us the benzyl magnesium bromide, which we are then going to treat with an epoxide. So this opening of the epoxide is going to follow a simple opening of the epoxide with strong nucleophiles, which after the acidic workup going to give me the alcohol that I can easily convert into the bromide with something like PBr3 in pyridine. And finally we are going to react that with the acetate, like sodium or potassium acetate, that via the SN2 reaction going to give us our target molecule. If we however wanted to do the green method, then we are going to deviate in the middle from this point and we are going to react our benzyl bromide with the corresponding acetylenide or alkanide anion that via the substitution reaction going to give me an alkyne looking like that. Then from this point we are going to treat that with the hydrogen on the Lindlor's palladium to do the partial reduction, giving us the corresponding alkene, which then we can subject to hydroboration oxidation, again bringing us to the primary alcohol, and from that point on it's going to be the same pathway as for the blue method as well. In each of those pathways the only carbon containing reagents that I've used were two carbon molecules, so in one case that was alkynide that made these bonds that brought us the double bond that ended up in our final alcohol right over here, here and there. 
and of course, in the other case, I used the uh, epoxide, which also ended up in the same place. And of course, for the other one, I have used my acetate, so the acetate ended up over there, adding also two carbons to our molecule. So when it comes to questions like that, and you are not limited by the nature of the functional groups that you can use in your synthesis, I always suggest you make your starting materials, your reagents that you are bringing into your molecule, as complex as humanly possible, so this way it's going to be much easier for you to accomplish your synthesis in less steps. Because at the end of the day, efficiency is probably one of the most important things that you can think about when you are planning your synthesis. And that's all I have for you for today. Let me know which of the two synthesis you like more, the green one with the acetylene or the blue one with the green yard reagent. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you for watching till the very end. Please click the like button and share this video to help promote it and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.